Hey there, I'm doing a quick screencast to follow up on a lecture from this week where I did a proof and I kind of glossed over a detail that I probably shouldn't have. But I told people about it in class, I told them to expect the screencast, so here I'm going to uh, fill in that gap. The proof was of the theorem that um, said for a compact set K and a continuous function on K, you know that the function is actually uniformly continuous on K. So I'm going to go through that proof right now, and I'll I'll point out the uh, important thing that I glossed over as before we head into the proof. So here's we're going to use this fact. Uh, the book characterizes failure of uniform continuity in this way, and it's just a propositional negation of the definition of uniform continuity. A function f from a to the reals is not uniformly continuous on a if there is an epsilon naught that's positive, and if there are sequences xn and yn in the set A, whose terms get closer and closer together as n goes to infinity, and yet the function values are bounded away from one another by epsilon naught for all n, for all indices n. Okay. So um, the we're going to use this definition here, this fact of uh, definition for not uniformly continuous uh, in the proof. And let me um, point out that this is what's important. This is what we're going to pay attention to. Specifically, it's these indices here. Uh, these indices are the same. In this difference, if the indices are different, uh, the difference of the terms doesn't make sense. That is, this is the term by term difference of the s terms of the sequence x's and the sequence y's. Okay? So we need to make sure these are different. If you go back and look at the proof that I did, I, that's something that I glossed over. Um, I shouldn't have because uh, it's easy to make them the same. So keep that in the back of your mind as we go forward. Okay, so here's the proof. So let's establish what we're assuming. Uh, we're going to say let k be compact. And let f be a continuous real valued function on k. OK, so let's suppose f is not uniformly continuous. On K. All right, let's let's suppose that. So this is how we're going to get a contradiction. That means using the fact that I put here above the proof, there exists an epsilon not greater than 0 and sequences xn, yn, and k, where the absolute value of the difference of xn and yn goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, and the absolute value of the difference of f of xn and f of yn is always greater than epsilon naught. So that's what it means to be not uniformly continuous. So we derive a contradiction using the other assumption, which is compactness. Okay. Since k is compact, the sequence xn has a convergent subsequence. And we'll call it x and k. And let's let x naught be the limit as k goes to infinity of x and k. That is, x naught is going to be the limit 
of the subsequence, right? It's a convergent subsequence. It's got a limit. We're going to call that limit x naught. Now, and so here's the detail that I left out. Consider the other sequence. And what we're going to do is we're going to go look at yn. But right off the bat, I'm not going to start with yn like I did start with xn. I'm going to start with the sequence ynk, right? Where the nk's are the same indices of my subsequence that I um, got from compactus in the previous step. So the subsequence ynk of yn. So the subsequence y and k is, a, is in k. I'll write that here. So since k is compact, it has a convergent subsequence. Oops. So we're going to call that y sub n sub k sub l, OK? And it's a convergent sequence. And so we're going to let y not be the limit as l goes to infinity of y sub n sub k sub l, OK? All right, so now consider this, um, the subsequence. x sub n sub k sub l, right? We're taking the same indices here. Maybe I should not highlight those. The indices here. And we're going to go in and look at the subsequence of the x n k's. Right. OK, the corresponds to the x n k l. So this is a subsequence of our previous subsequence. All right, this is a subsequence of a convergent sequence so it converges and it converges to the same limit point as the original subsequence. That is, the limit as L goes to infinity of x sub n sub k sub L equals x naught. All right. Since we know the absolute value of the term by term difference of our original sequences goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. We know the absolute value of the term by term differences of our subsequences goes to 0 as l goes to infinity. So why not so use why not? Yeah, why not the limit of the YNKLs right? Well, the YNKLs I can add zero creatively to them. And then I can use the algebraic limit theorem to rewrite that this way. And then we know this first limit here goes to zero because the XNKLs and the YNKLs their distance goes to zero as L goes to infinity. And then as L goes to infinity, the XN 
kl, those go to x0. So I'll just rewrite this, y0 equals x0, right? That is, these subsequences, the xnlks and the ynlks, they converge to the same place. And in fact, the original subsequences, the xnks, um, converge to x0 too. But uh, that's beside the point. Since f is continuous, It preserves con convergence of sequences. That is to say, the limit as L goes to infinity of F X N K L minus F of X N K L. Oops, I did that wrong. That should be a Y. That's the limit as L goes to infinity of F, X, N, K, L minus the limit as L goes to infinity of F, Y, N, K, L, which is X naught minus Y naught, but we know X naught and Y naught are the same, so that's zero. Okay, what does this mean? This means, given our, oops, our epsilon not greater than zero, there's an L in the natural numbers such that oops, if little l is bigger than capital L, then the absolute value of f of x n k l minus f of x n Oops. Y n k l is less than epsilon, right? That's what it means for this thing to go to zero. Okay. But this contradicts our supposition. that F is not uniformly continuous. I'm gonna just notice something here. I'm gonna go back up two lines and I'm gonna notice that there should be an, a knot there just to make it more clear that we're contradicting one of a particular assumption that we made. Okay. So, this contradicts our supposition that F is not uniformly continuous on K, okay? We therefore conclude F from K to R is uniformly continuous. On K, all right? That's the proof. And let me just go back and point out you know, what what I added to the proof that we did in class, that is the, the, the finer point, which is important in analysis, and so I made a mistake in not making sure you saw this the first time, is this, okay? Making sure that when we looked at this difference, we had the same indices on those two. Okay. And that was something that I kind of waved my hands at in class. So this screencast fills that gap. Make sure you understand all the steps, and I'll see you next time.